Hey there, we're gonna take you through a series of videos that will give you a general overview of Bistal 360 features. In this video, you will learn the fundamentals of user access policy. You can only access Bistal by belonging to the Bistal administrators or Bistal operators groups. These are built-in groups that you cannot change and adapt to your needs. We created the user access policy in Bistal 360 to address this limitation. It allows you to create a custom profile to match the needs of users. Let's consider this scenario where multiple teams access the system with different needs. The developer needs to access all of the environments, the production and test environment, but only with read-only access. We have the application support team with multiple members that need different access to different applications and different features in the product. And then we also have the BISOC administrators, which should have full access to the system. So now let's see how to configure these in BISOC 360. So this first page is where we land when we open Bistal 360 and to change the permissions and user settings we need to go to the settings page. Then we need to choose the menu entry user access policy. And this is the setup, security setup that comes out of the box when you install Bistal 360. So the user you use to install the system will have been created as a super user. A super user is a user that is the equivalent of, of a Bistock administrator, so it has the full rights into the product. It's the exact user I'm using right now. So what I'm going to do now is create users to match the scenario I just described. So I will start with creating a read-only view for developers so that they can go and see into the production environment and test environment of Bistock. So I'm going to start by specifying the username and domain name of this user. I will need to specify if this is a user or a group. In this case is a user, so I don't select this option. I can also select if this is a super user. In this case I want it to be a read-only user, so it should not be a super user. The next option to choose is on which environment should we give access to this particular user. So we need to access in both, so let's start by giving access to production. In the next option, we can choose all the applications that this user must access. Since this is a developer, the developer must see all the applications, so I'm just going to select all available applications. Let's move to the next screen where we can choose the permissions associated with this particular user. Since, again, this is a developer, we want it to be able to access all the features in the environment except for executing any action against it. So I'm going to choose all access available except the operations. Under the custom SQL query, we have an advanced option. Here we can choose which queries the user can execute. I'm not going to select all queries can be executed by developers and they can also export results. Again, I don't want them to change the system, so I'm not going to give them access to add new queries uh, or to delete queries, etc. So now I'm happy with this configuration, I'm going to click OK. And so the first user is created, and this is the called a developer one, created in, under this domain, accessing the production environment, and this is not a super user. So what I'll do next is add this user, the same user, developer one. But now I will add the user to the second environment, which is our test environment. And I'm going to select similar set of permissions.
I will now also show that you, instead of adding this user, a particular user, to Bistal360 permissions, we can also add groups. I have pre-created a group with all the developers that you need to access the system. And now what I can do instead of giving access to each individual developer, I can just simply assign permissions to that particular group. So I'm going to refer to the group I created. specify that this is an empty group and now I will assign simil similar permissions to what the developer one is. I will also have the Bistock developer group to the second environment, to the test environment. So now I covered the scenario for access for BizTalk developers. What I will do next is add users from the application support group. And in this case, we will have different users with different permissions. And the first one I will create is Claire, who works for finance in, in this particular uh, company. And so Claire will need to access the finance related applications and she will need access to a few other features in the product. So now, instead of choosing all applications, I will choose only the finance-related applications. And now, instead of selecting all the permissions in the environment, I will select just permissions that Claire needs to access the system. So Claire will need access to message box queries, as well as topology diagram in the system for her day-to-day -day operations. Claire will also have permissions to operate service instances and applications. Now I will add another application support user, which is John. And John will have a different set of permissions because John works for HR, so we will need access to the HR applications instead, and he will need access to different sets of capabilities in Bistal 360. So now I will choose the HR application that John needs to have access to. And now I will choose the features that uh, John needs to do his day-to-day -day operations against these HR applications. He will have access to the advanced event viewer and tracking data in BizTalk. He will not have permissions to operate into the applications. He is just a first-level support person that will escalate any problem to a different team. And the last user I will have is the BizTalk administrator. So we want someone, a group of people, to be able to access the environment in full. And so what I will do is create a user that is similar to this very first one, which is a super user that can access all of the environments. But I will use an anti-group instead. Now that I've created all of the user profiles, I will log into some of them so that we can see 
how is the experience for each of them. The user interface will adapt to their needs so that there is not a full interface available to everyone and it's easier for users to understand their features and how they can use Bistock 360 to manage their Bistock applications. So I will start by accessing the environment as a developer. Now we've just loaded this user, this is developer1, and we can see that this user is loaded as a custom profile. This is the custom profile we created for the user, and this is different from the super user that we were running before, where we would have access to all the features. And now, since developer1 does not have access to all of the operations, if we try and operate an application, let's say we go to a particular application, let's say the EDI application, and we can see all the artifacts related to the application, but we don't have any available operations which are available for the super users. You can also not operate on service instances, so uh, this user is only able to read and not able to change the environment. Now let's go into a, a user that is more restricted. Let's look at Claire. Claire just has access to the finance applications and she can operate on applications as well. As you can see, Claire doesn't have access to as much capabilities in the product as the developer one had. But Claire can see the applications and can operate the applications she has access to. If we navigate to an application and we try to operate a particular location, we will see that Claire has the ability to operate and so she will be able to change the status of this application. Claire has also access to other features in the product. She has access to the message box queries and topology. Claire also has access to a few other options in Bistel 360. In this case, Claire has access to message box queries and topology of Bistel 360. And this is all we have today for user access policy.